Welcome back. This is the second knowledge clip to the book Evidence-Based Human Resource Management, what we know about people in workplaces. In this clip, I will dive into the question, how to do evidence-based human resource management? So after this clip, you will understand the following. First, I'm going to explain to you that decision-making is difficult, and it's that you're always hindered by something called bounded rationality. Then I will dive into the evidence-based human resource ma management decision-making process. Eventually, in the end of the clip, I will tell you what the benefits are of evidence-based human resource management. So let's, uh, let's have a look at bounded rationality. If you work in an organization, many things are happening at the same time, and decisions are always under some kind of pressure, which makes managing people in workplaces difficult. There's always problems, and all these problems are always urgent. And it's really difficult to have all the information about all problems continuously at hand. There is always somebody yelling that there needs to be a solution now. There's always someone who has the solution. And in my experience as an HR manager, uh, the solution also often always involves, we need more people. Well, this might be nice, but may not always be the right solution. Maybe you're doing things wrong. Maybe people are just not trained in the right way to deal with the work. So actually understanding the problem and the causes of the problem are very important. Hiring more people is not always the answer. It can be, but it's not always. So examples like we need more people or I know a solution, this is the best consulting tool that, that, uh, that is out there. Our competitors are using it as well. We need it too. Well, these are all called quick fixes. Quick fixes are solutions to problems that arise in the workplace that are not really well thought through. They seem nice, they are maybe cheap, or sometimes they are really expensive. Uh, and sometimes they are used to fix something where, for which the problem is not entirely clear. So quick fixes, in a way, are expensive fixes. They seem nice and quick, but they are not. Two problems. The first problem is the problem of bounded rationality. I already mentioned when there are problems, when we can't find enough people, when the production lags behind, when competition is suddenly innovating and we don't do anything, we don't know exactly what causes that we lag behind. We really miss the knowledge of the entire complexity of the problem. And that leads to di making decisions difficult. And it leads to quick fixing solution uh, with, uh, with uh, interventions to, to make at least some decision. Well, quick fixes, they are not as effective. They are um, sometimes very expensive and sometimes they seem to work for a short while, but then in the, event, in the end they do nothing or make things even worse, and then they, then they need a new fix. So these two things together, learning to understand the problem and avoiding making uh, too fast decisions and making wrong decisions are central to, to evidence-based management. Bounded rationality, what is it? Bounded rationality means that all of us, no matter who you are, we lack a complete insight of a problem and all its causes. It's just a given. It hinders our decision making because if you want to take a decision, you have to make a decision without knowing everything. And bounded rationality is a fact. It's there to stay. But, and that's very important to know, there are strategies to add a little bit more rationality to decision, to decision making. So, Instead of running, rushing to a quick fix, you may use a little time to get a little better in insight in the problem and to think a little bit longer about what might may actually help to solve a problem. So unfortunately, decision makers often neglect these strategies or they are just not aware of them. And in this book, we'll try to make an, we will make an effort to teach you a little bit about that. In the rush to solve a problem, managers, decision makers rush to quick, fish, quick fixes. Evidence-based human resource management is a decision-making strategy that can help practitioners to overcome bounded rationality and base their decisions about human resource problems 
on a little bit more rational background in order to eventually make better decisions. So evidence-based human resource management, what is it? It's a method for practitioners. So it's not something to do about doing research, it's about doing practice. However, it's a decision-making just method for practitioners to consciously, so thinking, apply expertise, so what they already know, and judgment. So trying to understand which information about a problem, about solutions, is actually good information. So method for practitioners to make better decisions. How to make better decisions? These pr practitioners use evidence from their local, local context, so from their department, from their organization, from the context of the organization. And then they uh, apply this to the decision. But not alone. They also turn their eyes to research evidence. So they critically evalu evaluate the best available external research evidence. Local context, local evidence from the organization in combination with research evidence published in research journals. And finally, but not the least, it should take the perspectives of the people who are affected by the decision into account. This can be in many ways. This is partly an ethical uh, responsibility, so you need to make sure that nobody is harmed by, the, uh, by an evidence-based decision. How, and also, uh, as part of the local context, so perspectives of people involved in the, in the decision are also often the ones who know best about the problem. Evidence-based human resource management, a method for practitioners, using evidence from the organization, the local context, using evidence from research, and take along the perspectives of the people who are involved. In a bit more detail, this is a summary of all the steps of, a, of an evidence-based human resource management decision-making flow. I will zoom in to the different elements in the next few slides. I think in this slide, the most important arrow is the one that's going from the bottom to the top. And in the book, you'll see that there are also arrows from each uh, of the steps in the project to the arrow that flows back. Because learning about a problem sometimes also just means rethinking the problem and reconsidering whether it is a problem or reconsidering who is affected. So decision-making, not in an entirely rational way, but learning along the way as well. Now in the next slides, I will zoom into the different elements of the decision-making flowchart, also using an example. To start with the first part, this is about the problem and identification. It is about really understanding what the nature of the problem in the organization is and to formulate a question that will guide the evidence-based information collection and building of the intervention. So these are some of the questions that you should ask before you engage in formulating a question. What is happening? What seems to be the underlying problem? What are the affected outcomes? What would improve in objective measures if the problem was fixed? Who are involved in the problem? Which domain of HR practices seems to be the most relevant? So the last question will help you to already narrow your question a little bit. Let's take an example to, to clarify this, uh, this process. Uh, I'll take an example from a call center of a, of a governmental organization and there are many people working there and their job is rather repetitive and monotonous. They have to answer the phone and there's always a queue of questions from, um, from clients that they have to, uh, have to answer. And they are uh, on a tight performance schedule. They need to really answer the questions with that, within, within a certain time because uh, you know, there's this uh, desire to be really um, uh, client-oriented. And that's, that makes the, the, the work pressure in these, in, these, uh, uh, in these jobs quite high. So the manager of this uh, call center is facing a problem. Namely, in their customer care, in their client care department, there is a high level of sickness absenteeism. 
and there's a higher level of staff turnover. Well, given this uh, in the current labor market it's really difficult to find replacement, this is it, an issue. If, st if staff leaves, then the other people need to do even more. So sickness, absenteeism, and staff turnover, these are measurable outcomes that this manager is really caring for and wants to improve. The company doctor gave some information. He says that a lot of stress and burnout complaints are part of the sickness absenteeism. So organizations, they have uh, some kind of uh, medical support and the company doctor or uh, however it's organized, they have information on the general level about the, the nature of, uh, uh, of sickness complaints. And if these are work-related, then it's feedback to the organization to work on. So burnout and stress, there's a problem there. Also, this organization keeps exit interviews, which is a, a common good practice to interview people who leave the organization to find out what their view was about the organization and what the reasons are, why they leave. And because they are no longer employed, they, they don't fear being punished for being open and fair, and this is actually a good source of information to find out what's, uh, what's wrong at, at, the, at the organization. So in this case, the exit interviews receive many complaints about the high work pressure, the high work pace. It's never done, it's never good. So this input can help us to specify the specific outcomes, the intended domain of HR practices and the people in the organizations which are the target group for the HR practice. In our example, the intended outcome are the stress symptoms reported by employees, and that translates uh, in sick leave time, and you might also say in, uh, in reduced uh, uh, employee turnover levels. So the most direct measure here would be the keep tra keeping track of stress symptoms in employees and see if there is a reduction if you, take, um, uh, if you implement proper HR practices targeting an improved well-being of, of workers. So the targeted groups are the, uh, the customer care employees in this governmental organization, and the intended human resource management domain will be work design, because it's, uh, it's, 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 it seems to be a, a question of how to organize the work and to make sure that people feel less stressed about it. But then, what can you do? So the, the government organization posed the following question for the evidence-based HRM project, how can the work design be improved to reduce the reported stress symptoms and sickness absenteeism by employees of the customer care department of this governmental organization? Okay, then you have a question and you can move on. So your task now is to try and understand what the causes of this problem are and what we know about how the causes relate to the outcome that, that they want to, uh, to improve and how this translated or known in, in, the, in work design practices. Like said, we need two sources of evidence. We need no, local evidence and external evidence. Let's dive into that. So as part of the external evidence, we should ask the question about what do we know about the science of effective interventions for the problem that we have at hand? So to give you some examples, um, where do you find this external evidence? Uh, there are many ways to go about it, but you need to be smart. If you would just go to an academic library, you'll find plenty, plenty uh, research articles, and you can basically do your dissertation about it. That's not what we, what we want. We want to have fast access to the key research evidence that can help us to make better decisions. The strategy is as follows. You can start using the book, because the book gives a nice overview of, the, of, of many theories. And in particular, in our case, in the example, you can turn to chapter 8, where there is a whole section about uh, stress theories and work design. In combination, you can be clever about finding research evidence. Once every while, researchers publish a summary article about all the research that has been done before. We call this a systematic review or a meta-analysis. These are excellent sources of information that you can use to find, um, to find interventions that are really effective. It needs a little bit of understanding of research methods, but given that, we, that I 
talk to uh, academic students mostly, this is actually your, your task. Okay? You're trained to do this, to find the, the literature that will help you make better decisions. That will, spill, will be your contribution to organizations. In the book, in the end of each chapter, you can find already an overview of such meta-analysis. So the book can be a nice starting point to quickly find your way to the best research evidence. Are you done then with collecting evidence? No, you're not. You need to also go to the organization and really understand what is uh, known in the organization. So what do people in the organization know about the problem and about interventions that might work or have been tried in the past? So this means really going to the organization and collect data from the organization, from the people that really experienced the problem. And there are many, many ways to collect local evidence. You can make a huge project out of it, but you can also keep it small. So it's your task as a, a practitioner using evidence-based human resource management to design a method to collect data in the organization to have a better understanding of the cause of a problem. And you can do many different things. So use your research skills. You conduct, can conduct interviews with people who are currently experiencing the situation and what they think that would improve their work. And this would be a type of qualitative research. Um, sometimes uh, you can also think about collecting data through using a questionnaire or use a questionnaire that has been used in the past. So, so for example, um, sometimes a good source of information are employee satisfaction surveys. Uh, sometimes you can also use records from the company to uh, administrative data such as absenteeism records or a report by the company doctor. So all these kind of data are either to, co um, to collect or just to grasp from the organization in order to make better, uh, to get a better understanding of the problem. You need to remember that uh, when you design research that you also take into account good research practice. So think about the measures you use, think about the type of interviews, think about all you learned during your research methods courses, and consider the ethics of the, of the people that are involved. Also think about the costs. So you can make an extent, extensive project out of it, but you can also try to decide which is the information that is really key, key to understand the causes of the problem and what is the best and quickest way to, to get this information. So these are all kind of questions that you should, uh, that you should consider when you develop an evidence-based HRM uh, project. So after you collect the information, then you can sit down and then the fun part begins. You can uh, evaluate all the evidence you had and start developing an intervention. So how do you evaluate the quality of evidence? Again, this is uh, a step where you can really use the skills you learned in your research methods courses to, uh, to make better decisions eventually. So it's always about validity, reliability, and generalizability. Questions you can ask about validity. Does the evidence help you to really understand the problem? Did you ask the right questions to the right people? I'll give you a clue. If your problem is about employees and you just, answer, you just interview one manager, you, you will not know the problem. But also, critically evaluate the quality of your measures, your review questions, the research design, and use good theory. So that's why in the flow chart, I often start with the uh, external evidence part, because if, if you know a little bit what is known out there, then you can fine-tune it to the context of your organization, which is easier than the other way around. When you start from scratch in the organization, then you have to find um, all the, the theory uh, that is out there. That is more inductive. If you want to be fast, you can better maybe use a more deductive way. Reliability. So is the data that you've collected, is it a one-off? Or is it possible to replicate it? So will you find the same information if you, asked, if you repeated your research in the organization? And that has probably to do with how many people were asked, who was asked. Uh, what's your sample size, for example? And finally, um, 
think about generalizability. So the information that you collected, does it generalize to the population uh, that you targeted for your intervention? So these kind of questions should be in the back of your mind when you evaluate the quality of your evidence. And there are quick tools to, um, to make a list of your evidence and to rate the evidence uh, and to make sure that you take the right evidence into account when you design an intervention. So the real fun part is here. It's about thinking, of, using all the evidence, uh, reflecting on the problem, and brainstorm about uh, potential interventions. And I'll highlight what you can do in order to uh, make sure that you develop an intervention that can actually land in the organization. It works as follows. How to design an effective HR practice. First, of course, obviously, the choice and design of your practice will depend on the local and external evidence you collected. Then, if you sit together with your research team, you can list, all, uh, you can list which interventions will be the most effective given your external evidence. So have a look at the external evidence you collected from research and all the uh, interventions that follow from, uh, from your literature. Then also list and do the same for what you did with your local evidence. So what are the conditions for effective interventions? What are things that they tried before and didn't work for whatever reason? So you can stripe out some of the things that you thought of using the external evidence. Then decide in the end which of all the potential interventions is the most effective? And you can be critical. Also consider costs and time of impl implementation and the difficulty of it. Uh, oftentimes, if you find something simple that is effective, that's preferred over something that is complex and effective. And then finally, if you decided on the one intervention you think will be the, the largest impact on the things you want to improve, prepare the organization for the intervention. Communicate to those who are involved in the implementation, so make sure that senior management is, is into your project. Communicate with employees, of course, since you involve them already in the collection of local evidence, they would know something is going to change about their problem. And use the evidence that you collected to explain why this intervention is supposed to be mo most beneficial for the problem that you had. Don't forget, very important, Oftentimes, when an evidence-based project is done, the project team is dismantled, it just stops, uh, the intervention is done, everybody happy, but it's very important to keep tracking whether the, whether the intervention works. So evaluate, pick a date to evaluate whether your intervention really improved the outcomes that you, uh, that you wanted to improve in the, pr in the problem. So how to organize this, the evaluation of a new HR practice. A good project thinks about this before closing down. So a good project team plans the evaluations of the implementation. And they also decide which data they will continuously collect to check if the intended outcome really improves after implementation. Organize follow-up. Um, if the pro program team is dismantled, make sure there's somebody who takes the responsibility to follow up. This can, for example, be uh, organized in the HR department, which is quite common. Um, and also use this as a means to check for continuous improvement. Um, here, the, uh, um, so going back to the example of, uh, of the high workload in the, in the call center, after the, the, uh, the intervention has been decided, in this case to, be, to use some flexible working, um, following up and, and discussing with its employee representatives about the, uh, the effect of the intervention will lead to fine-tuning and will lead to maybe also new questions. Um, and this way, like I said, organizations will continuously learn and improve and be better places for people to work in. Wrap up, now you know. It all starts with the problem of bounded rationality in, um, that happens in decision making about people in workplaces. And evidence-based human resource management can help to uh, improve decisions because it offers a decision making process to overcome, not solve, but overcome bounded rationality. Uh, we discussed also the stages of evidence-based human resource management and we highlighted this with an example. I hope you'll use it.